Thank you. Um, so um, <coughs> I'll talk about a little experiment we did with Tribeca Film Festival about creative artificial intelligence, as the um, title, original title of the presentation is clearly indicating. But um, I did change the title a bit to make it a bit more poetic. So this, uh, this title is a quote for, uh, from a movie called Alphaville by, um, by um, Jean-Luc Godard. And Alphaville, as uh, probably most of you know, is, uh, know, is a science fiction movie um, set in dystopian future. Um, it's set in the city which is ruled by AI. So the whole city lives by the rules of AI. Uh, the way people behave, the, the way people act, it's all defined by that. AI. Um, and in that movie, um, the main heroine of that movie is that girl. She's a, she's a daughter of a scientist who created that AI. And she lives a nice, prosperous life until a stranger comes to that city. And she takes her for a journey that change, uh, changes her life forever. <clears throat> Why is Alphaville interesting? It, it's set, in a, it's set in a future. AI rules the world, but it's a dystopian future. Today, we could argue that our reality today is already ruled by AI. So everything that we do is somehow computed, calculated, directed by some kind of artificial intelligence. And so it's happening in advertising. So a lot of advertising today is AI driven. But creativity seems to be the last frontier where AI hasn't done much yet. And so, since you know, everyone is doing adverti in advertising AI, we decided to try ourselves as well. So we did this experiment with uh, Tribeca Film Festival. So Tribeca, um, you're familiar with the, with the festival. It's a film festival, but they also have a, a section which is called Tribeca X. And um, Tribeca X is dedicated to advertising. So there's a number of uh, films um, that are submitted. Um, and one day we were chatting with Andrew Essex, um, used to be CEO of Tribeca, said, OK, let's do something together. Um, and we were thinking, what could we do? Maybe you know, I could be on the jury, whatever. But then we decided, let's do something interesting. Let's put um, our product, our AI, to that jury so that machine would be one of the jurors. So standard classic jury with humans and one AI. And it was an experiment just to see what happens, just to see how, how humans would judge the works and how um, machine would judge those works. It was an experiment which um, is almost like a by the book machine learning uh, exercise. Um, what we realized is that we have a massive, massive um, amounts of data about all of the ads that are running through our platform. And since this is a film festival, we focused only on video creatives. Um, and then this is, this is absolutely by the book. So, so you, know, you define independent uh, variable, which in this case are creative features or creative properties of those uh, video creatives. There's dependent uh, variable, which is um, performance. Uh, of those videos. And then you do a bit of machine learning, a bit of computer vision to, to kind of find all those features. Um, you do a standard uh, regression analysis. You do a bit of a um, randomized control trial to kind of a test for that regression. And in the end, you end up with a prediction model. So this prediction model, what it does, it can predict the performance and quality of ads that you run through that model. And so we said, OK, let's do this. Um, we had a massive amount of data, so billions and billions of impressions, um, very different brands, very different industries. So we felt we have a um, you know, right that we need. We extracted over 100 different, different features from those creatives. Um, so everything from you know, standard stuff, length of the video, orientation of the video, but then also you know, things that are you know, typically a bit harder to extract. All this was done by computer, so all this was, uh, was powered by computer vision. So what are the, what's the subject of the video? 
uh, what's the pacing of the video, how the editing looks. So all of these things, so all 100, uh, 100 features, we did go very much into detail. So we created uh, this model and uh, we felt quite confident about it. So we felt this is really, really good model um, and it has to tell the truth. So we were a bit like HAL in Space Odyssey. No 9000 computer has ever made a mistake. And so we took finalists of uh, Tribeca and ran them through uh, that model. So this is the winner. I'll show you the winner, uh, the eventual winner of Tribeca. This was decided by jury. It's a long video, six minutes, so I'll just um, you know, play first minute. said it's six minutes long, um, fantastic piece of storytelling. So what we were interested in, okay, jury decided on this, how did, how did the machine do? Was there any alignment? And it turns out we got it completely wrong. <laughs> so um, out of 10 finalists, uh, on our list Smirno was number seven, and the one we thought should be a winner, or our machine thought should be a winner, was a number five on jury's list. So we got that completely wrong. Now, you could say jury was wrong, machine was right, because you know, we used the model that would very accurately predict the performance, so maybe, you know, maybe juries, as we know them, they're, they're no good. Or you know, maybe we did something wrong, and you know, if you look at the process we used, these are typical things that could be wrong. Maybe our methodology was wrong, maybe Maybe observational methods are really not good. Maybe we should focus more or uh, rely more on a you know, randomized control trial and really do proper A-B testing and so on and so on. Uh, maybe our metrics are not right. So we were using consumption metrics such as you know, video consumption rate, video completion rate. We did use also ad effectiveness metrics, such as purchase intent and, and, and so on. But maybe this metric system is just not good. Maybe we're just not measuring things correctly. Or maybe our data set was not good. This is the most typical reason why AI doesn't work, because data set is not good. It's not big enough, maybe it's not appropriate enough. Um, but we felt it was. We felt everything was right. And we realized that perhaps everything was great with the machine. But when it comes to great pieces of storytelling, not everything is in numbers. Because marketing is about consumers, it's about humans, we are people. And we are not just data sets, we're not just numbers. And sometimes to understand marketing and to understand advertising, you need to look beyond numbers. You need to understand people, you need to understand life. And in order to understand life, you have to go to Riviera. So we did go to French Rivera. <laughs> that was in the summer, went to Cannes. <coughs> and in Rivera, we met this guy. So this is Alain Delon. Back in the 60s, the biggest star, gorgeous, beautiful guy, sex symbol, back in the 60s. And so, you, you meet the land alone, what do you do with the land alone? You do what human has been doing forever. You measure, right? So this is Leonardo da Vinci, Vitruvian man. We've been measuring humans or ourselves forever. And so we measured the land alone. We tried to understand what makes a land alone really beautiful. Why is he such a gorgeous guy? Can we, can we measure everything on the land alone and really say land alone is gorgeous because 
these are the proportions, this is how it looks, and so on and so on. So it's the same exercise as with, with ads. So you, you, you measure, you define creative features. Um, based on those creative features, you do a bit of machine learning, and you end up with a predictive model. So on the right side, you can see the model, predictive model for male beauty. So this is, um, um, this is what we end up with. This is our model. Say hello to Gabriel. Um, Gabriel is, he can be yours for $18,000. He's, uh, um, <laughs> he's, uh, he's the most expensive and the most popular male sex doll. He, he's real. You can buy him. Um, fantastic model. This is male beauty. And when you're trying to deconstruct this predictive model and understand what makes men beautiful, you end up with something like this. So there are many features, but these are, these are kind of main features, right? So, so if you want to be really, really attractive, you have to have strong arms, blue eyes, six pack, maybe some other things, but uh, if I wanted to be really, <laughs> really, if I wanted to be really gorgeous, this is what I, what I need to have. And if that doesn't work, if I'm still not gorgeous, um, then you have to go and ask designers. And designers will always say the same thing, make logo bigger. <laughs> but um, what about this guy? Look at him, right? he's, he's ugly, right? look, look, look at the nose, look at, uh, he's, he's not gorgeous, he's not a land alone, right? He's, uh, he's short, he uh, doesn't, doesn't really look, you know, an example of male beauty. However, this guy back in the 60s, Serge is his name, as you know, Serge Ginsburg, he was dating the most gorgeous women back in the 60s, Jane Birkin, Brigitte Bardot, they were even fighting for him. So how come, how can a guy who looks like this <laughs> date Brigitte Bardot? So let's, let's see what Brigitte Bardot says about that. Tu vois mes pieds dans la glace? Oui. Tu les trouves jolies? Oui, très. Et mes filles, tu les aimes? Oui. Tu les aimes, mes genoux aussi. Oui. J'aime beaucoup tes genoux. Et mes cuisses. Aussi. Tu es trop jolie, mes fesses. Oui. Très. Et mes seins. Tu les aimes Oui. It's a total laugh. He loves everything, every bit of her. But that laugh and... Maybe this is not how love works. Maybe this is not what makes people attractive. Just um, body parts. Maybe there's something else. Maybe there's something that Serge Ginsburg has, and it's not a six pack, it's not blue eyes, it's not strong arms. Maybe it's something, something else than that. In French, they have a fantastic expression for that, je ne sais quoi. 
something you cannot understand, something that goes beyond description. So what is this? Sometimes we need to look beyond body. And it's the same in advertising. Maybe we need to look beyond what we are typically measuring in advertising. Maybe, you know, talking about the position of the logo or the size of the logo for that matter, or, you know, is there a clear call to action in the ad? Is button yellow or orange? Maybe things like that don't really matter. Maybe great advertising goes way beyond that. And we have a fantastic example here. This brilliant ad is violating all the rules. There's no logo in the first three seconds. There's no clear call to action. There's no call to action at all. And um, as you know, we all probably know in our research, our AI showed that the performance of the ad will be much, much, much better, will be actually 23% higher if you have in the first two seconds a shot of a beautiful woman with long hair. And here we have gorilla. So um, <laughs> yet, this is brilliant. This is brilliant. So perhaps we shouldn't be looking at those obvious things, and we shouldn't be looking at the, oh, what's the you know, aspect ratio of the ads? What's the length of that? Is it six seconds? Is it eight seconds? Um, things like that don't really matter in advertising, because you need to look beyond that stuff. And, when you start thinking what this is, um, and this is where our real journey into what makes ads, great ads, really starts. So we identified those four things. They're quite obvious, but, but if you could somehow detect those things, that would really, really work. So beauty, inspiration, entertainment, and utility. Four things that, makes, that make ads great ads. I'll go very, very quickly through examples. Um, beauty, these are all short, uh, short ads, but they, they have something that's more than just, a, you know, the color of the button or the, you know, the length of the video. Um, inspiration. So if you can inspire consumers with your communication, that makes them feel something, makes them do something. Have to entertain, maybe it's just stupid jokes, but you know, it's fun. And utility, you have to, you know, offer something useful. And really, when it comes to how are we designing our AI, how are we designing <coughs> our advertising, I think what we're good at, we're good at figuring out what our subject is, and we're good at figuring out the method. So the method we got right, the technology we got right, but what is typically missing is the description. How do you describe things? What is the stuff you're looking into? What are those, what are those things? And a lot of times um, we focus on wrong things and we speak wrong language. We speak very technical language, whereas maybe our language should be a bit more cheesy, should be the language of life. And we need to start speaking this language. We need to learn this language. As the girl in Alpha will need it to learn that language as well. C'était mot que je ne connais pas. Ne me les a pas appris. Aidez-moi. Impossible, princesse. 
Il faut y arriver toute seule. Alors vous serez sauvé. Si vous n'y arrivez pas, vous êtes perdu comme les morts d'Alphaville. Je vous aime. Thank you.